Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Toby. And uh, some of you folks have been asking how I animate in Blender Grease Pencil. I made this little scene with a motorcycle guy driving away from the monster the other day. And uh, since I'm doing a couple more shots, I thought uh, I'll take a scene that I have open right now and I'll walk you through it very quickly just to show the process. So this is the scene that I have. This is like the cleaned up line art version. And I just hit play very quickly. This looks like this right now. Motorcycle guy looks to the right and uh, then like finds his resolve and like speeds forward. So this is the animation. And there's a lot going on in this scene. There's like facial expression. There's like some cloth here with like folds. There's like his hair fluttering and um, there's like some perspective shifts. So a lot of things to consider in this scene. And I think the biggest obstacle that one can create for themselves uh, when tackling something like this is if you try to do everything at once. So I gonna show you the steps that I took to arrive here because it's quite a quite the segmented process. So let's start off with the very basic. So this was a scene as I started it out. This is like a basic blocking that I made for my guy. So we have the basic anatomy, the basic like posture of the arms, the head looking to this side. And in this one, I just try to block out uh, the basic head movement. So basic head movement, basic camera movement. If I go to the scene camera, as you see, there's like the guy, here's the camera, and there's not so much going on. He's like wobbling a little bit back and forth and turning his head. That's all that's going on here. Then like starting to speed forward in the end, like camera coming closer to him. Oop. So there you go. Basic setup is the same as last time. I have the camera and I have like a grease pencil object that is hidden right now in this view, but it's like linked to the camera. So it's hovering right in front of the camera lens. And the first thing I did once I had this and I was happy with the timing and everything was create like a white object, basically a white filled object, uh, just to give myself a canvas to draw on top, just like um, muffle the scene background a little bit. And then where do you start doing something like that? So uh, the most important thing in this scene was um, the head. This is like the biggest part that, that moves or like that changes position in this scene. And so I try to rough out this head shape here. Uh, by the way, this will not be a video about how to draw characters and like faces and stuff. Uh, this would take a little longer probably to explain. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to do that, I can highly recommend uh, the YouTube uh, channel of uh, Proko, Stan Prokopenko, I think is his name. He um, makes very good basic explanations about how to learn what's um, the, the system that you imply to like um, construct a basic human head shape and like the rules that applies to that. So there you go. You have the head looking to the um, to the right or screen left and then going to the front. And I put a little cross on here just to indicate where the center of the face would be or like the this would be the top of the nose probably for any given character or like the, the eye line. And you notice when he turns his head, the cross kind of lags a little bit behind, which is like um, very important to employ in animation in order to make it look naturalistic, that there's sort of like um, um, a, a follow through. So like when a, the bigger object moves and um, the smaller objects that are attached to it kind of move behind. And I wanted to employ it in this like very basic level even where um, it feels like the force of um, gr um, gravity or no, like man was it called me in english it's like a like a love-hate relationship isn't it um but well that this cross is a little bit delayed so um second thing i did after this head shape was putting a little basic box on this to indicate basically the protrusion of the face where like the mouth is located on because if you just construct this kind of basic teardrop shape for a head usually will put the mouth too far uh, back in the head and it will make it look like um, uh, like a weird face basically. So 
I sketched it on top. The cross gave me an indication on where to put this. And so I have the indication of, oh, this is the head geometry. This is like the chin of the skull and it moves accordingly. Again, like a little bit of a, of a follow through when he moves down here, the chin goes a little bit in this direction as if it would like drag behind slightly and then make this tiny little arc here on the bottom side and come back to the front. You know, it's like, like it's wobbling a tiny bit. Cool. With that out of the way, uh, I started off with the nose. And this is like, I made them all in different colors so I could distinguish the layer from each other. And this is like a new layer for every single facial feature, basically. Um, I chose to start with the nose because this is like the most fixed facial feature um, of all of them when it comes to like uh, facial expressions. There's like some things going on with the, with the nostrils and like the folds there, but still it's like relatively static compared to other things. And again, like this line here gave me an indication on where to put it and where the top part of it would be. This is like where the cross intersects and I could manage to draw it in perspective kind of nicely and have some basic things about the, the expression that I already knew I wanted to give him uh, already going on there. Like here you see like he's dragging up his nostrils a little bit and then whoop, short moment of relaxation and going to the front. With that out of the way, I started doing the eyes and this is like the, this is the biggest part to get out of the way, the most expressive part. So this is like a very rough pass on the eyes. Uh, the way you would do this or the way I did it as well is you chose um, some, the key poses basically. So you choose one pose where the eyes are more like surprised or scared. Um, and you draw this one here and then you choose one with a second expression and the character wants to transition in a shot from one emotion or one expression to the other one. Then you do the second pose here where it's more of like the angry eyes. And so you have your two fixed um, fixed expressions and then you can just like start filling out the blanks. There's not too much going on except for this, just like a very basic rule of animation. Whenever a character changes the direction where they're looking at, like here, um, uh, they will blink. Well, that, that's what we do as humans. Like when we change the direction where we look at, we blink. Also when we change thoughts, basically, it's a good indication of like a character transitioning from one emotional state to the next. Just like close the eyes and open the eyes again, the next one, you blink. And there we go. So that out of the way, the only big facial feature left was the mouth. So this was um, this one here. Again, like it was really helpful to put this box here just to see where it would be in relation to the head. And um, same principle as for the eyes, basically. So you would choose a key pose, bit like, oh, mouth agape, like, oh my God. And then instead of blinking, just like gulp, like closing it, dragging it up, and the mouth wobbles like here to the left a little bit. This is this kind of um, uh, this kind of delay that I was talking about. So it's dragging behind a little bit to the left, and then it wobbles to the other side to the right. Makes this little arc here. Be like here's on the left and to the right, and to like a grim, grim. Flanch, flanching of the teeth. Rip. And there we go. So this was the mouth. Just like always trying to measure like the distance uh, to the chin and to the nose. So I'm, um, I'm pretty sure that I like um, do it in the right position. Again, this is like not, no, it's just far from like a perfect animation or like super on model. I'm not a professional animator. I think I'm sure like there's a lot of you guys who can do this way better. Just thought like show you um I show you how you how I did this. It was really helpful. And uh, basically the only other thing left was the hair. And it's a bit cheating. Uh this can be like a really challenging part to animate, but uh my saving grace was that in this scene he's uh, riding the motorcycle and he's riding very fast. So the hair would flutter in the wind quite a lot. And uh, what I did is was basically I just drew every frame anew without looking 
um, looking how the other frames looked like. You see, like basically every every frame. This is animated on twos, which means like there's one um, keyframe every two frames of the timeline, and uh, you see every keyframe has another hair pose, which like when played in motion will give the impression that the hair is fluttering in the wind, wind very, very fast. There is other ways to do this, more clean ways to do that, but um, for timing sakes, I thought it was probably good enough. And uh, so this is like the head out of the way. This is like uh, more, more than half the deal, basically, for a scene like that, because that's where we look at as the audience, we try to look at characters in the face. Um, with the body, the jacket and the hands, I took a bit more of a rough approach. So this is the very first rough pass for the body. Just like try to super quickly scribble in the hands uh, based on like the blocking model that I still see there in the background. And uh, the arms would go up with a little bit of a delay between the screen left and the screen right arm. Screen left arm going up a little bit earlier and then the screen right arm following it be like uh, the screen left arm reaches its peak here and the screen right arm reaches peak here while the left arm is going down a little bit. This is a good way to ensure that your animation looks like um, naturalistic and not stiff, that there's a certain delay or like um, a certain asymmetry going on between the left and the right body side. So raising, lowering, and again, like the, the 3D blocking in the background makes a great um, f pass zero sketch, basically, just to like see where where the character would be, uh, how the camera looks at him. So like really, really helpful to do it like this. And then I just um, try to iterate on that and with every pass, make it a little bit more readable. This is like a lot of work, but yeah, what, what do you want? It's animation like this. Uh, there's a lot of passes, and again, I think the biggest uh, obstacle that you can put in front of yourself is trying to make it perfect in the first pass. Just like put in the work, like do a couple of passes. So you, this is uh, jacket pass rough. The next pass looked like this. This is a little bit more clean. And then the third pass looked like this, which is even a little bit more clean. And uh, this is not the final pass. It's coming. Uh, coming up, but first I made a rough pass for the face as well, which looked like this. Let me switch off all the other layers. So this was the pass I did just before the clean line art, where I tried to basically just like draw it as if it would be the final pass, just like getting rid of all the single layers, drawing it all in one stroke, but I didn't particularly pay attention to like cleanliness of drawing basically. I just like drew the shapes as I saw them. Um, and this is just like basically the final proof of concept. So this was quite good already um, before the final cleanup pass, which is what I showed you in the beginning here, this one here. And optim in the best case scenario in this final pass, all you wanna do is just like trace lines, right? This is just about cleanliness of line drawing. Uh, I can highly recommend using the smoothing feature to draw. You have up here in um, options, there's an, uh, there's a, there are the here are options to like enable smoothing for your stroke. So even if um, your hand might like jitter a little bit or there might be some small inconsistencies in your stroke, the software can take care of it and basically smooth out your drawing. It's like very helpful for this kind of final process. I usually don't like very much these kind of auto smooth features and softwares, but um, for these final passes can be really, really helpful in order to look at, look, uh, make it look more, more clean. So there you go. I also like try to fix very minor things in this pass. Like this is uh, possible just because I'm, I'm doing this all by myself and I don't have any other people that I have to hand the project off to. It's not, um, not to be recommended in like a professional environment, but um, I thought might as well just like leave some things to the to to myself basically when doing the final pass. And uh, there we go. This is kind of the final pass of the line. Or it looks like this. Quite happy with it. Um, next step will be just like filling in the spaces and like coloring it and putting some basic shadows on this guy. 
and then I think it will be quite of a nice looking shot. Um, background and stuff's coming up. Maybe I also make a video about this sometimes. Uh, yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed this little uh, demonstration and uh, you learned something or so. Um, again, if you want to learn more about animation, I recommend that you uh, not only listen to me because again, I'm not I'm not like a pro in this business. Um, can learn very basic facts about animation like from from um, a book that i can highly recommend anybody it's called the animator survival kit by richard williams and i think everybody who's interested in this should um should have a read it's just like the, the super basic class on like how to do animation in general it's the guy who made uh, who framed roger rabbit by the way the cobbler and the thief uh, claims to fame really really cool guy rest in peace um and if you want to learn how to draw characters better, again, I already recommended the channel of uh, Stan Pro Prokopenko. But um, as uh, as said, well, not sad as it is to say, but um, I think the only way you can really uh, do better at this is just do it a lot. Just like every day, draw a bunch of characters, go to drive drawing classes and draw people in cafes and stuff and if you do it enough occasionally you will get the hang of it it's just like put in the time and um, get there all right sweet so uh, guys thank you so much for watching uh, hope to um, talk again soon and um, yeah if you um, if you like this video or leave a comment I'm always happy I'm still super new to this YouTube game so um, yeah you enjoyed it um, Stay tuned for more stuff. Cheers.